Lisa here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to my weekly deck reviews. I have been running this series on my channel for a very, 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 very long time and I haven't gotten bored with it. So I guess that's a good sign, right? Hopefully you guys aren't bored with it either. If you are new to weekly deck reviews, this is a series I do where each week end, usually, I share with you the tarot deck and the oracle deck that I've been working with over the past week and then I talk about how it worked out for me and then I share with you what I'm going to be working with next week and how I might think it might work out for me. So it's kind of a fun way for me to do follow-ups because I feel like I do a lot of walkthroughs and unboxings on the channel, but I like doing content that also lets you see like what my experience actually working with the deck has been. So this past week I've actually been working with the Wizards Tarot. This is the guidebook. It, the guidebook was written by Barbara Moore and she was, as far as I understand it, the creator of this deck. So she would have given like feedback to the to the artist about like what kind of things to maybe portray and that sort of thing. So as far as I know it was collaborative but but it was it was really Barbara Moore's um, brainchild and the artwork on this deck is really really stunning. The guidebook is amazing. I love the way that Barbara Moore approaches her guidebook writing and she has written quite a few guidebooks for different tarot decks. Can we just talk about the fact that Llewellyn lately with their guidebooks has been putting out these full color gorgeous like full page illustration really really well done guidebooks and they're so enjoyable to just work with because of all the beautiful art. I also love the way they smell. Somebody recently said that in a group I was in on Facebook and these really like these have that really inky delicious smell um but yeah this is a really really wonderful guidebook and i'll talk more about that in a moment but i want to talk about the cards so firstly let's talk about the peggy bag match that i made for it because i can't i can't help myself i was real excited so this is what where's the bottom okay this is what the back of the cards look like so they're really really pretty but there's lots of reds and oranges some hints of blues and purples and this how perfect is that? So that's that side and then that's the other side. So you kind of get like a lighter and then like a shadowier side. So perfect. And I actually did edge this deck this week. So I'm going to apparently talk about the mods first. So I actually picked a bunch of colors. I used um, so a really deep like red, a really deep purple, and I think, was there a blue in here? No, a really deep red, a really deep purple. Oh, and a black for the Major Arcana. And then I used a brighter red, oranges, and yellows for the miners. And I'm just really pleased with how it turned out. It's pretty multicolored. Like, in hindsight, I think I might have preferred to put just a little bit more maybe yellow. Maybe a second shade of yellow in there. But it turned out really good. I do get asked a lot what I use to edge my decks. My favorite method is to use a chisel-tipped art marker that's alcohol based something like a copic marker but a really cheap knockoff version because copic copic markers are really expensive and when you edge decks with a marker you do wear a groove into the marker and that would be really sad if it was a really expensive marker so i've gotten like sets of four for around two dollars in different color schemes at like walmart of random brands and stuff so i look for the kind that have dual ends like a fine point and then a chisel tip and i use the chisel tip to edge my decks and then if there's still ink in there <laughs> after i've done edging then i still have the fine tip to actually color with or do whatever else i want with the marker but I use the chisel tip for edging. I also have done ink pads and some other methods, but ch the, those chisel tip markers are my favorite because they just feel more foolproof. That being said, you do get some wraparound. At least I do the way I do it. You can see there's this one was like a reddish pinkish color, and you can see that it wraps around the card a little. I don't mind that, uh, but some people might, so keep that in mind. You might get a more, um, if you're more careful than I am, you might get a less of that wraparound or if you use an ink pad or another method, you might get less of that wraparound as well. But anyway, okay, that's a lot of talk about modifying the deck. But I just was, it was a really fun mod to do. So anyway, let's talk about the deck itself. So the artwork in this deck is incredibly vivid and colorful. It feels like it's something right out of like a movie or a video game. I cannot get over how sumptuous and like velvety the Queen of Wands dress looks. It's very, very vivid. Sorry for the reflection. These do have a bit of a glossy finish to them. Um, and they are Llewellyn cardstock, so they're fairly thin and flexible, but they do shuffle, like rifle shuffle, shuffle really, really well. Um, and they're standard tarot size. So these are, you know, I don't really have a problem with Llewellyn cardstock. As much as I enjoy more luxurious cardstock, there's also something really satisfying about this style of deck as well. 
I will say that this deck read so well for me this week. I had no issue pulling the messages out and I felt like the scenes that take that are shown in each card really beautifully show the meaning of the card and I didn't feel like it was an effortful deck. It felt very easy breezy to work with. Um, but I love this card. Can we talk about this card? So this is the Four of Pentacles, unless I'm mistaken. Yeah, the Four of Pentacles. Um, and you've got this like family all locked up in their nice house and they've got like obviously something good going on in there, but they've locked out like other people. There's all these bars and chains and locks on the doors. I love this depiction of the Four of Pentacles. And it's not always about greed. Sometimes it's about over, over clinging to what you, like your comfort zone, right? But I actually really enjoyed this deck. I, would I say that this is like my favorite deck of all time? No. But it's really quite, it's really fun and I will enjoy pulling this out. I don't think it will be my first to reach for for client readings if I'm completely honest just because it is kind of body beautiful. Very body beautiful actually. And it lacks diversity and in both like racial diversity and also in like age diversity. Uh, that being said, for personal readings, I think this was a lot of fun to work with. Um, this was the, yeah, this is such a great, like I just, I love how vivid and rich the colors and the illustrations are. It doesn't, it, I know it's compu like a computer or like a digital art, um, but it just, it feels really smooth to me. I love this Queen of Cups. Yeah, so I really, really enjoy the artwork in this. I think it gave me lots to work with. I love the lotuses that are present in the cup suit. Lotuses and I have a, a very strong connection. Um, not so much a fan of the moon card. This is one of the cards that I didn't like as much. I get what it's portraying here, but I just, I don't like the giant crayfish, spidery looking thing. Not a fan. Um, and it speaks too much to the fear aspect of the moon, which to me isn't all it's really about. Um, somebody pointed out, and I wish I could remember who, somebody did a walk through this deck or was showing this deck on their channel on YouTube here, and they said this looks like Daenerys, and now I can't unsee it, and it's glorious. I love it. Um, Daenerys Targaryen from um, Game of Thrones. And I also really freaking love this depiction of the Ten of Wands, because it speaks to, yes, there's a burden there, there's a weight, but it's a responsibility and there's a sovereignty in that responsibility. You've you've put all this effort in and now you, you have people who look to you or who are relying on you, and I just think that's a really potent image for the Ten of Wands. There's a bunch of really good ones in here that I, that I really enjoyed. Um, I like this depiction of the sun as well. But yeah, this was a, yeah, I'm just gonna keep saying it was a lot of fun. This was, this was, this deck was a lot of fun to work with. Um, again, I don't think it's gonna become a workhorse deck for me, but very, very enjoyable. And let's talk briefly about the guidebook since, again, <laughs> I mentioned the guidebook. So, very, very well done with full pages. There isn't, um, really like the, the meaning that you get here talks about the card in its, like, upright position essentially, but at the top you do get some keywords for both upright and reversed. So if you read with reversals or if you enjoy looking into like the shadow aspects of cards, those reverse keywords do give you something to sort of dig into. I do kind of wish that there was a little more about like maybe the reversal, reverse meaning down here because while I don't read with reversals, I do often read cards in their shadowed positions or as obstacles and then I like to look to the reversals for that. There are some really fun spreads in here that I played with this week. One of them is called the True Magic Spread, and it's basically a spread that's shaped like a witch's hat. I don't know if you can see that there. Uh, like a witch's hat with three cards over top. And the positions look at things like, um, where did it go? Ah, yes, oh, so it's, it's three essential like sections. So there's a gathering energy section, an amplifying energy, and then a directing energy, and then finally a possible outcome. I really liked the layout of that spread and the way that it described the positions. So I found that a really useful one. The other spread that I really love in here is the alchemical spread, um, which takes you through a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine cards. But weirdly, there's only eight pictured in the spread, but when you read through it, there is cards one, two, three, four, five and then five a and five b and then six and seven so that's a total of nine so one of the, the the card number five isn't actually pictured in the layout so i noticed that but the actual description of the layout it takes you through the alchemical process so calcination dissolution separation conjunction fermentation putrefaction spirit spiritization distillation 
um, and then coagulation. And I, I really enjoyed that spread. It was, it was really, really useful. And then another section in the guidebook that I really loved was chapter seven, The Magical Path. And this just is, it feels like you're having a conversation with Barbara Moore over coffee and she's describing what she wanted to rep the cards to represent through the majors. And then a few little um, like Easter egg kind of things that inspired her for a few of the minor arcana cards as well. And that's a fun little section that I really, really enjoyed reading. But yeah, very, very well done guidebook. I think there's also some introductory, if you're new to tarot, kind of stuff in the beginning, which I typically skip, um, to be honest. But everything that I read in here was really good and fun. And I would definitely find this, this is a very beginner friendly deck as well. I enjoyed it as somebody who's been reading for a long, long time because I loved the fun aspects and I loved the sort of wizardy kind of world. But if you are new to tarot, this is definitely one I would recommend. A lot of the Llewellyn box set decks do make excellent beginner decks. They really think that through, I think, with the way the guidebooks are put together and the way the artwork is depicted. Um, but yeah, really enjoyed. Wizard Tarot. The Oracle deck that I paired with it is the Practical Magic Inner Witch Oracle. This is the first edition. And I believe there was only like a hundred of them printed or something like that. This is by Grounded by the Moon. And this is very timely because the Kickstarter for the second edition of this deck is currently live at the time I'm filming this. So you can go back it like right now. I'll try to remember to have a link down below so you can check that out. This deck is, um, it's just a lot of fun. Uh, and the Kickstarter version I think is going to have a different kind of cardstock. So I think it's going to be less glossy. It's going to have a matte black lamination, or I mean matte black edging. Sorry, there's a bird outside my window. It's very distracting. Uh, and there's going to be a few extra cards, possibly even more with some stretch goals if they meet them. But let me take you through my copy or show you some cards from it anyway. So it comes with a little booklet. And the booklet has like just little snippets on every card. And you also get with, with the version I have, I don't know if this is true in the Kickstarter version, but there's a few cards that talk about spreads. So there's some information here about single card spreads, two card spreads, three card spreads. Um, one of them in the two card was do, don't, and then past, future. Yeah, that makes sense. And then there's two sort of specific spreads. So one is called which is self-care, four card spread, and the other one is an inner witch, five card spread. Uh, but in general, this deck is just a lot of fun. It worked really, really well with the Wizards Tarot. And because both decks kind of had this fun, sort of playful vibe to them, I really, I really enjoyed working with it. Again, I, I got this deck in a, a at a trading event. Um, so this one ended up being gifted to me actually at that event. And I, I have a lot of fun with it. Now I love the movie that I know was the, the that inspired this deck essentially. Um, so I feel like there's a little more depth to each of the cards than what you just see, than what you see on the card, if that makes any sense. If you are unfamiliar with the movie though, I think these are basic sort of symbols, messages, and so forth. I don't think this is a deck I would reach for for say general intuitive reading. I think it's fun to pair with other decks. This would this would pair well with any sort of Halloween-y themed deck um, that you might have. It'll be it would be wonderful to play with at that time of the year and I probably will break it out in the Samhain season. Oh look, as I say that I pull the Halloween card. But yeah, these are really fun. So they do have the title at the top and then there's a keyword at the bottom. So for Halloween, it's magic. Family home is sacred space. Inner circle is strength. Um, the only critique I think I would give, oh, and this, this copy has been um, hand edged in black. The only critique I would give is that I do struggle a little bit with the font um, that is used in the guidebook. So it's like one of these um, more playful, like handwritten kind of fonts. And I do find it hard for me to see at this size. And part of that is because as I'm getting older, I'm kind of reaching that reading glass stage where I have to pull things away before my eyes will focus. And then by the time, because I'm nearsighted, by the time I pull it, pull it far enough away to focus, I feel like I then, it's too far away for me to see. <laughs> and I think it's, it's an element of the font more so than the size. Um, so I don't know if that's changing in the second edition or not. It is readable, it just, it's a little more, it takes a little more effort to read. So that would be my only critique about the guidebook. Um, and that is, I believe, a similar font as to what is on, is, it, is that the font that's used for the, yeah, it's a similar font to what you see on the keywords. So that says Beyond the Veil. So I think that is a similar, a similar font. Sorry, I just wanna make sure I didn't totally screw these up. Oh, okay, 
I did not. That's good. So yeah, that was a lot of fun. That is the Practical Magic Inner Witch Oracle by Grounded by the Moon. I think is what it says on here. Yeah, that's what it says on here. So check that out on Kickstarter or you can check out Grounded by the Moon on Instagram and probably see more images as well. I don't think I have a walkthrough. No, I don't have a walkthrough of this deck on my channel. So that is the Oracle deck I worked with this week. And the reading cloth that I worked with was just a fun, silly little past, present, future cotton one that came in like a witch box, but Peggy backed for me on velvet. And to be honest, I don't like the way this like cotton feels. It's like kind of rough. So I just used the velvet side. I think one day this week I actually did a past, present, future spread for myself. And then I just did, I did use this side just for fun, but I don't think you really need this. This might be kind of fun for casting or something and like throwing something and seeing where it lands along that timeline. That could be kind of fun. I never thought of doing that before. So anyway, that was the reading cloth I worked with. Okay, <laughs> let's talk about what I'm going to be playing with next week. So the tarot deck that I'm going to be working with, I've actually had, I got this deck in a trade in like January <laughs> and I still haven't worked with it. It's May and I'm, I've, I just keep, new things just keep coming in and I just keep not giving this deck its fair shake, its turn. So it is time. It is definitely time. So I am going to be working with this week the Margaret Peterson tarot. Now this is not new. <laughs> And I do believe you can still get it. I believe it's available in the mass market. And my deck is still in order because I haven't filmed my walkthrough yet. I think I may do that this weekend. Um, we'll see. Because I would really like to be able to shuffle it. And I don't want to have to put it back in order. But this deck just has a really beautiful, kind of intuitive, dreamy sort of quality to it. And it really draw it's really drawn me in. Now this copy has been trimmed. And thank goodness I did not trim it. Because it is a very smooth nice trim job it's a nicer trim job than I would have been able to do I'm quite sure like it to me it's quite perfect <laughs> um but it's had the sides it used to have this border I believe that goes all the way around it and so the sides and the tops have been trimmed that's exactly what I would have done this is what the backings look like I'm actually really excited and there's also a neat color variation so you can kind of see when I fan the cards out here the majors are kind of multicolored, but then when you get into the minors you have let's see if I can show you you have these kind of earthy tones for the wands, and then you have these blues for the swords, these sort of soft greens, I don't know if you can see that here, for the cups, and then sort of some deeper kind of greeny goldy colors for the pentacles. So I feel like there's definitely some color palette cohesion happening through the Minor Arcana, which is super fun. Uh, as far as a book, it only came with this, um, I guess this is like a little white book. Uh, and it doesn't look insubstantial actually, but it looks like you mostly get, oh, I don't think I've looked at the guidebook before. Oh, this is cool. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Through the Major Arcana, there's like these like poems. Okay, that's really cool. I feel like I heard about this somewhere. Um, and then there's a section for the courts and they're read like you're reading somebody's story. And then the minor arcana actually, instead of poems, the pip cards it says in here have um, nice little chunky descriptions. So this is not an insubstantial little book. Um, it's 78 pages. So we'll see. I'm actually really excited to see about those like poems and stuff. I hope we get to play with some minor, some major arcana. Uh, let's actually look at one just for fun. Whatever, it's my channel. I can do it right now if I want to. <laughs> let's just pick one randomly here. Okay, so let's look at the wheel. Um, Wheel of Life. So this is what the image looks like, and here's what it says in the book. Revolving, not standing still, no beginning, no end. Revolving, you can't escape. Revolving, holding on to happiness, holding on to suffering. Lost in the magnetic field of revolving. Round and round you go, wondering why nothing is resolved. When the blindness of love thaws, you regain your sight. Subtle shifts in orbit, you'll find the answer by the river. How cool is that? That's really interesting. And I, okay, yeah, I'm gonna need to do a walkthrough of this deck because I can already see stuff in that one image that just makes me wanna talk about it and I don't have time to do that in this video. So I'm gonna have to film a walkthrough. I think maybe I'll do that tonight and then put it up on my channel for like this coming up week. Anyway, the Peggy bag that I picked to put this deck in, I don't know if this is the one it's gonna live in, but I like the colors for it, is this like 
earth tones kind of butterfly bag so that's the one that it is living in for now this is one of my OG Peggy bags I've had this one for a long time this was when she was still using these really pretty braided cords but these we found just ended up being kind of slippery and they didn't hold the deck closed the bag closed as well so we switched but I really like these I really like this one. It's kind of fun to dig out an older bag. What I do is when I when I end up rehoming a deck that had a bag, or if I move decks into different bags, or I decide to keep a deck in its box instead of a bag, I always keep the bags and then I wait for a deck to like want that bag again. You know? Is that silly? I don't think it's silly. Anyway, the Oracle deck that I picked to work alongside this one, I'm I'm really pleased I picked it because I think it's going to work really well. Um, I don't have a ton of new Oracle decks in my collection to work with, so I pulled out an older one to work with this deck. Um, but it's one that I really love, and I think the artwork is going to go so, so well with this. So this is the, um, what are you called? The Hero's Journey Dream Oracle by Kelly Sullivan Walden, and the artwork is by Rasuli. Whew! It came back into my brain. Thank goodness. Um, anyway, this is what the backings look like. They've just got this kind of, like geometric um, kind of pattern. Sorry, there's a lot of reflect. It is a very glossy deck, um, but I find this to be a really flowy, dreamy kind of deck. Sorry, I'm going kind of quick. Um, and I think this one will look really beautiful next to the Marguerite Peterson without drawing too much, bringing too much sharpness or focus, because I think one of the things the Marguerite Peterson artwork seems to have is kind of like a soft, blurry, not blurry, but like muddly, I don't know how else to describe it, abstract quality to it. So an oracle deck that's got really sharp, clear images next to it, not so much, but this flowy, dreamy Rasuli artwork, yes. And I love this deck. This is one of my favorite mass market oracle decks. I think it's absolutely stunning, and I find it to be really empowering and really supportive and some really good stuff, some, some good stuff's in here. And if you're a fan of Joseph Campbell's The Hero's Journey and any of that work, or if you want an oracle deck that's kind of focused around the theme of dream work, this one's really good. I don't use it for dream work. I just love, love, love the messages. I find them super applicable to everyday life. And yeah, so we'll see how it reads with Marguerite Peterson, but I already know I love this deck. So that's exciting. And then I wanted a reading cloth to work with that was going to be a little lighter behind those cards. So I grabbed this one that has, um, it's got this design on this side, but Peggy's cloths are reversible. On this side, it's a marble texture. And I really think that's going to look pretty behind the cards and not be too distracting. So that is what I'm going to be using behind it when I'm, when I'm on the go, because when I'm at home, I just put these cards on my reading table, which has a different cloth on it right now. But yeah. That is it. Thank you so much for hanging out with me for my weekly deck review. I will see you again in the next video. Remember to like, share, subscribe, and if you want to book a tarot reading with me, you can do that over at supportoftarot.com. Thanks so much, guys. Bye!